I rise today to speak about a critical disaster relief bill that I've recently introduced here in the United States Senate. In the West, we have a saying that Mother Nature bats last. For millions of Americans, uh, that saying is a reminder that often entire communities are at the mercy of the raw force of nature and natural disasters. Sadly, we're reminded of this truism every year with wildfires in the West, hurricanes in the South, and ice storms along the Atlantic seaboard. The devastating and tragic mudslides that have recently devastated Oso, Washington, are the latest example. And I'd uh, like to first and, and most importantly express my deepest and most heartfelt condolences to the families of the victims of this tragedy in Washington State. And I want to assure the people of Washington that Coloradans stand ready to assist in whatever way we can with a recovery process that we know all too well ourselves. We are all in this together. In times of disaster like these, I believe there are no Democrats or Republicans. We put aside partisan divides to unite in the face of tragedy. When confronted by these dire situations, we stand united to support our fellow Americans who have been shaken by the destructive forces of Mother Nature. When the Northeast was rocked by Superstorm Sandy in 2012, a majority of the Congress stood together to fund relief and recovery efforts, not because it benefited their state or because they expected anything in return, but because it was simply the right thing to do. Similarly, when Hurricane Katrina devastated the Gulf Coast in 2005, we united to support our fellow Americans who lost their homes and livelihoods in the hurricane and its aftermath. And when ice jams just last year called, caused the Yukon River to spill its banks flooding Galena, Alaska and the surrounding towns, Congress stood as one to provide aid and assistance for those in need. My state, too, has felt the pain of destructive and unprecedented natural disasters in recent years. In fact, many parts of Colorado are still reeling from the September 2013 floods that resulted in 10 deaths, washed away homes and businesses, and literally redrew the map across parts of my state. In my travels to places like Evans, Jamestown, and Estes Park, I witnessed firsthand how thousands were impacted by this disaster, which spanned 200 square miles and 15 counties. Fortunately, Madam President, in spite of a destructive and partisan federal government shutdown that forced uh, all of us uh, to scramble just days after the flooding, many of the 18,000 evacuees in my state have returned home and are working on re rebuilding their lives and their communities. And this is uh, thanks to the assistance from federal and state agencies, including important relief funding made possible by the Superstorm Sandy relief package we passed here in the Congress in a bipartisan manner. So in sum, we in Colorado are on the road to recovery thanks to the tremendous efforts of thousands of people, including many of our colleagues here in the Senate. But as my colleagues who've dealt with their own natural disasters know all too well, the initial relief steps are only the first step. Looking ahead over the next couple of months, Colorado, like many other western states, may be facing another round of devastating floods, wildfires, and mudslides. Why, Madam President? Well, Colorado, like Washington, has received an above-average snowpack this year. We have more snow than, than normal. And we're expecting 127 percent of average snowmelt this spring. So when you combine that increased snowpack and the impending spring runoff with stream beds that are still jammed full of debris, crumbling riverbanks, and waterways that the flood rerouted out of their original path, Colorado still has a recipe for disaster on our hands. And I want to share a photograph, Madam President, of uh, what happened in one of our communities. You can see the culvert that's been washed out, the vehicles uh, that are embedded in the cobbles and sand and boulders of the riverbed, and the riverbed itself completely rerouted uh, during the flooding and took out the road that's in that particular area. Now, the good news is, as we look at the uh, potential for additional disaster, we have the power here in Congress to confront the disaster before it has the chance to occur. And I want to speak to the history of what Congress did. We, we recognize that Congress did the importance 
of stabilizing water banks, preventing soil erosion, and clearing debris from waterways back in 1978 through the Agricultural Credit Act. And as a part of that important law, Congress authorized the Emergency Watershed Protection Program, or EWP for short. And as many of my colleagues know well, EWP provides critical disaster relief assistance for families and communities that have suffered severe damages from flood, fire, droughts, or other natural disasters. The EWP program focuses on funding critical emergency recovery me um, uh, measures for runoff mitigation and erosion prevention that will relieve imminent hazards to life and property presented by natural disasters. Protecting and repairing these watersheds, wherever they may be, is critical in preventing the type of erosion that leads to massive mudslides and future disasters. Unfortunately, even though our country is rocked by these natural disasters every year, the critical EWP program does not receive consistent funding. And the sporadic and inconsistent way we fund it via ad hoc supplemental bills has created a backlog in need of over $120 million nationally. For uh, my colleagues in the chamber who may not immediately recognize the importance of EWP and the program that's attached to it, let me make clear that there are 14 states that have projects that have been left unfunded because of this backlog, meaning that there are up to 28 senators who could see relief in their home states if we pass this bill. This uh, backlog is unacceptable. It's preventing us from funding dozens of projects that can help reduce the frequency and severity of mudslides, projects that can protect our watersheds, and projects that can save lives. So with this in mind, Madam President, I rise today to ask this Congress to come together yet again and pass legislation, which I introduced last week, supporting a more permanent funding stream for the EWP program. I've introduced the bill with my home state colleague, Senator Bennett, and it's been co-sponsored by the senior senator from Washington, Patty Murray. It will not cost a dime, but it will finally change the way we structurally fund the EWP program by creating a common unified account to provide support to families and communities around the country. This common sense legislation would also free up dollars that have already been appropriated in the past, but have not been used. Unlocking these dollars will not create additional spending, but it will infuse this newly created, created account with seed funding to begin clearing out the backlog and helping states like Colorado finance critical projects that can save lives. Then moving forward, my bill sets up a system where appropriators and states affected in the future can ensure that every dollar made available to the EWP program is used when needed and put back into this important permanent fund when it's not, reducing the threat and the cost of future disasters. As an avid outdoorsman, I'm well aware of the dangers presented by the forces of nature, and I've been a longtime supporter of EWP and its vital relief efforts. The importance of this program was only further emphasized to me last September when boulders, water, and debris came roaring through El Dorado Canyon, which is just a short mile from my home. And Madam President, there were scenes just like this as well near my home. Madam President, it's become very clear that every moment we spend trying to piece together ad hoc funding for this program every year after these disasters have already occurred is another moment that could be spent rebuilding the homes and the livelihoods of Americans that have been struck by Mother Nature. Americans should not be forced to wonder or worry about partisan divides undermining their ability to access critical resources and services. They shouldn't have to face the uncertainty of whether or not Congress will pass supplemental funding to support their families and communities after a devastating event like the one you see here that forever changes their lives. And they certainly shouldn't have to wait for Congress in order to access essential and proven services from the EWP program when a disaster leaves their homes and communities in shambles. Unfortunately, Madam President, some in this Congress have shown that they are incapable of rising above partisan posturing to help those in need. The reckless partisanship has nearly prevented us from passing a bill, I should say rather that the reckless partisanship of these individuals nearly prevented us from passing a bill to help the storm-ravaged states affected by Hurricane Sandy 
and kept the government shut down for 16 days, even as we in Colorado were struggling to take the important first steps toward recovering from our historic fall flooding. We can't let funding as critical to our constituents as EWP be subject to this kind of rancor, which is why my bill is so important. That's why it's long past time that EWP received a solid, dependable funding stream. And I hope that my colleagues will join me in supporting this legislation, and I look forward to working with Senate appropriators to adequately finance this fund for years to come. With the funding structure created by my bill in place, communities around the country that have been knocked off their feet by brutal and unanticipated disasters will be able to count on this program to immediately help them to get back up and onto the road to recovery. This is not only the responsible thing to do, it is the right thing to do.